Have you ever wondered what the rumbling from Attack on Titan would look like in Minecraft? Because after the final episode aired a few months back, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Originally, I just wanted to build the Colossal Titans and Eren's Founding Titan, but I thought it would be boring to just have them in a regular old Minecraft world. Specifically, I wanted to build one of my favorite scenes from the show, where the rumbling first arrives at Marley. That means I need to build this big old city for the Titans to trample. But first, we need to get some proper landscape for this build, because regular Minecraft generation is not gonna cut it. Originally, I was going to manually build the entire world, but I quickly realized that that was possibly the dumbest idea that I've ever had. So, I turned to my old friend, World Painter. This software allows you to literally paint your own Minecraft worlds and easily lift mountains from flat terrain. This would be the perfect tool to get started with. The area around the city seems mostly flat, but I wanted you to be able to stand above the city and watch the titans approach the town below, just like this incredible shot from the show. So, I made the terrain steadily rise the further away it got from the shore. My first attempt wasn't quite what I was looking for. There were too many downward slopes, and it was just too small. So, I got back to it, increasing the scale of the world to give myself more room to work with. And boom, we got ourselves some really nice terrain to work with. But that was the easy part. Before we can build the rumbling itself, we need to construct our coastal city. I analyzed the terrain and began to outline the city by painting in a network for the main roads. And it was about right here that I realized what I had gotten myself into. This was going to be a ton of work, and I was hoping to have this finished in like three weeks. Spoiler alert, it took a month and a half. Now, I needed a lot of buildings for this city, but I had an idea. If I just made a few different designs for some buildings, I could copy-paste these structures all across different parts of the city to save on time. I just needed to make enough templates so that the entire city wasn't made of the same few buildings. I took a look at this scene to figure out what kind of buildings I needed to create, and picked out a few of them to build. Let's go with... That one. The first building I designed was very simple, as I wanted to start smaller so that I could get a general idea for the blocks to use for these buildings. This first one would act as a blueprint for some of the other designs, as seen with this next building that has a flat wall on each end. I reused the same design, but extended the sandstone on the edges to match this look. I also made this original building here, which turned out really bad and is my least favorite, so I hardly end up using it. I took another look at the show and built up a couple of larger buildings that would hopefully fill up more space in the city. I also worked on building a church, which I have no idea what kind of religion the Marleans follow, but... It looks like there are churches in this scene, so I'm making them. I also made more variations of some of these buildings at different angles, so that the buildings could properly turn and follow the curves of the roads. Okay, that took way longer than I wanted it to, but I think all the buildings are done now. But for some reason, it feels incomplete. Something was missing, I just didn't know- Oh yeah, they all need interiors, don't they? <sighs> You might be wondering why I'm even bothering to make interiors for a world that no one's ever gonna see. Because the world download for this build is available in my Discord server. There will be a link in the description of this video if you want to join. But I'll probably be asleep when this video goes live, so it might take me a couple hours to post it. Also, I want to start doing more content with members, such as exclusive building live streams. So if you want to support my projects, it would greatly help me out. But anyways, I begrudgingly started on these interiors because my life is so hard, but luckily Kush and Omrains were there to help me out with a couple of them. So, thanks guys, my friends who helped are all linked in the description. Okay, now it's time to actually place these buildings around the city. Did I have a plan? Nope, I just started placing them around randomly. This step of the process ended up being a lot slower and more precise than I first imagined, but slowly but surely, the city was filling out. Now, I wanted the area around the shoreline to be more sparse with warehouse-style buildings, so I whipped up some more designs and finished filling out the rest of the city. Now, with a few final touches, this part of the build will be complete. First, I extended the shoreline and added some docks along the coast as seen in the show. I also wanted to make some cannons that the soldiers used against the Colossal Titans to fill up space along the big empty shore. I've never built a cannon like this before, so it took me a good while to figure out what the hell was going on and how to make them look good. Eventually, I did get a nice design down, but to make extra sure that you could tell this was a cannon, I added a blast light to the front of it. I kept the streets mostly empty just like they are in the show, but I did add some lamps and signposts throughout them. I also built up this little car and put a few around because, I don't know, I felt like it. I added some trees into the grassy areas between the buildings and on the hills behind, and put in a bunch of tall grass to make the slopes feel more full. And after fixing up the streets and cleaning up some mistakes, 
the city was complete. That means it's time to finally build the rumbling. Starting with the Colossal Titans, we need to figure out the proper height for these guys. But that's way easier than you'd probably expect. From the show, we know that the walls of Paradis are around 50 meters high, which would put the Titans at around the same height. Each block is equal to 1 meter, which would place the Titans at roughly 50 blocks tall. But once I actually started building them, it still felt a little bit short, so I would end up extending it to be closer to 60 blocks tall, which would be around the height of Armin's Colossal Titan. I've never built a humanoid figure like this before, so not knowing what I was doing, I began with a basic outline for the body before trying to fill it out. My inexperience held me back at first, as every attempt at the leg and torso just looked awful. And soon enough, I realized that the way I was approaching this wasn't working. I was too focused on smooth curves, but it just didn't work for an actual body on this scale. So for my next attempt, I started with a huge block chunk for a body and began to carve out the details instead of just building the whole thing up from the bottom. Changing the way I was looking at the build helped a lot, and soon enough, I finally had a body that I could actually work with. I spent a while tinkering with the structure and even tried making it thinner, which I did like the look of, but the Colossal Titans are very bulky, so I would end up reverting this change. I also thinned out the arms a lot once I realized how skinny they were actually supposed to be. I still wasn't entirely sold on this design, but I hoped that detailing the Titan would bring it together in the end and it would turn out fine. As for those details, I began to place in all of the bones that stick through the muscles, which was pretty simple work. But it was also time to work on the head which, come on, you guys didn't think this part would be easy, did you? I kept coming back to the head design to change it over the next couple days because it just really was not easy to make on this scale. It does look a little bit goofy, to be honest, but come on, a little bit of goofy never hurt anybody. After smoothing out the structure more with some stairs and slabs, I began to give the Titan its proper colors. Usually, I would just do a simple gradient or a random mix of blocks, but... For this, I experimented with adding proper shading by putting darker blocks in the shadowy areas and putting the lighter blocks out in the more visible areas. And this was definitely the right call. I really like how it turned out. To finish off the Titan, I added some steam around the back, mostly focused around the legs. I tried a few different ideas for the steam, but most of them didn't really work out too well. Now, since we're gonna have an army of these Titans, I figured they needed some variation. So, I made a second design for a Titan that's taking a step forward, since the Titans will be marching on the city. Using these two, I made a few more variations by punching holes in them and giving them missing limbs, since the Titans were just bombarded with cannon fire from the Global Alliance. Before I could actually spread the Titans out in the army that makes up the rumbling, there's still one part of the build that's missing. We still have to build Eren's Founding Titan. Now, the Founding Titan is gigantic, and it's a lot harder to find accurate measurements for this thing. Most sources that I could find estimated the Titan to be around 700 meters long and 400 meters tall. Looking at the estimated size of this build, I was already feeling a little intimidated. For my first attempt at the Founder, I started by outlining the spine. Axiom and World Edit have some really nice commands I can use to get a nice curve to the back, but this first attempt wasn't that good. But don't worry, attempt 2 will be much better! Using the same method I used for the spine, I began to outline some of the ribs along the main body. However, at this point, I was pretty much just freehanding the curve of the ribs, so they didn't end up looking that good. As you can see here, they came out way too far from the spine even after I trimmed them back a bit, and the curve is just too messy to keep. I realized that I was going to have to completely start over. I wanted to match the more circular curve of the bones as shown in the anime, so I realized I can just use actual circles. I don't know why I didn't do that from the start. Adding in some circular outlines for where the ribs would be, I instantly knew that this was going to work. So I redid the spine to add a more gentle curve to the back and got back to work on the ribs. <laughs> Get back to work. I didn't- that wasn't even intentional, I'm just reading the script and noticed that. The ribs closer to the legs of the Titan don't come out as far as the ribs near the front, as you can see in this image of a bird's eye view. They curve out further from the spine, the further up they get. Because of this, I made a few templates for the ribs using different sized circles to replicate the curve. Instead of freehanding the ribs like I did before, this time I started with a circle and matched the curve of the ribs to it to get a better circular look. Now, let's finish up the spine. Each vertebrae has its own little plate that have these big old danger spikes sticking out of them. I just know that tapping your finger against the tip of those spikes repeatedly would feel so good. It didn't take me too long to come up with a design for these plates, but I had to make multiple versions of them to match the curve of the spine, which was a little annoying. 
With all of them in place, I went back to add in the danger spikes that I mentioned earlier. The spikes get smaller and smaller as they approach the legs, so I had to make a new, smaller spike with each plate along the lower back. There are also some really big, even pointier spikes in the middle of the upper back, so I decided to quickly whip those up while I was at it. With the main body done, I added proper colors to the entire thing, and oh boy is it starting to look really cool. Now, at this point, I had been working for over a month, and this video was long overdue, so I was excited to finally build up the torso and call this build complete. It was time to finally witness the rumbling in Minecraft. Or at least it would be, because I almost forgot that I still have to build the legs. <sighs> Yeah, it's very rarely seen, but this thing does in fact have legs, and I couldn't just ignore them, even though I wanted to. The first attempt, as usual, went extremely poorly, but the second attempt was a little better. I feel like I've said that a lot this video. As I kept working, though, I realized that connecting the legs to the body was going to be a problem, because I needed an entire pelvis for this thing. Like, I needed to build a pelvis. Who the hell do you think I am? I can't build a pelvis bone in Minecraft! So I logged off, moped around for a couple hours about how I suck and can't build a simple pelvis bone, before logging back on and immediately building a pelvis bone that actually turned out quite nice. At this point, my friend Nano logged on, who's an actual artist who knows anatomy, so they were able to give me some pointers. Connecting the pelvis to the spine was a bit weird, because you might not know this, but spines don't usually go like that, so it just kind of looked awkward. However, in panels from the manga, we can see that parts of the pelvis are held together by these weird tendon things. I think it's just a Warhammer Titan ability holding it all together. So I used these as a quick fix solution to connect the pelvis up, and as I began to fill the legs out more, I also added a few more to attach them to the pelvis. Nano once again used their anatomy knowledge to help shape the calf better, and they also wanted to make the feet, and I certainly didn't want to, so I was like sure, why not. After adding some final touches, the legs were complete, but I still don't know how the hell this thing is supposed to walk. Okay, now it's actually time to finish this build off with the main torso of the Titan. To begin, I extended the spine outwards and began to mark out where things such as the ribs and arms would go. I used a similar strategy for these ribs as I did before, but these ones actually connect together in the front, so I had to do it a bit differently. I'm honestly astounded by how incredible this rib cage turned out. Like, I have no idea how I did that. I added some spikes along the spine before starting on the arms, and I noticed that this Titan has forearm bones where the upper arm should be, which is... Not anatomically correct, but whatever, I don't care. Nano once again came in clutch for the hands, doing almost all of the shaping by themselves. In the meantime, I bit the bullet and got started on the head, but I had no idea how I was supposed to build this. The first attempt was pretty horrid, so we ended up scrapping it. But I, I, I said it again, what is that, like number six? Another friend of ours, Voxel, jumped in to help with the finer details of the face once the general structure was done. After almost an entire hour of just working on the head, we were getting close to completing the entire build. But at this point, it was literally 5 a.m., so I decided I should probably go to sleep and just finish it tomorrow. I woke up bright and early at 2 p.m. to finally finish the build. Pretty much all that was left was the hair, for which I made these three long strands with different shades of black to drape over the head, and the build was starting to come together. We made the hair a lot thinner over the face and forehead to keep it visible, but with that, the Founding Titan was complete. To finish off the rumbling, I finally began to put in place the army of titans in the water below the Founder, a process that Axiom made very quick and simple. And finally, the rumbling was complete. <laughs> 